Retro Rev Saturday morning, Jeff along with you, and I had the privilege recently of talking by phone with Greg X. Vols. He is the lead singer for Classic Petra. Now, if you're wondering what the X stands for, it's Xavier. I hope I pronounced that right. Now, if you say you're not familiar with the work of Greg X. Vols, well, then maybe you recall songs like More Power To You, Coloring Song, Chameleon, Beat the System, so many more, including our own theme song. We open each week with the song Come and Join Us. So those of you who were following on Facebook and uh, wondering when I put out that bit of trivia, it is indeed Come and Join Us. And right now we're going to join Greg X. Voles for the interview. Greg, how are you today? I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm doing very well. I want to take a little time with you to travel back in time. Craig X, we're going to take a look at where you started in your musical history. I want to talk to you a little bit about the 1960s. You were in a band called the Wombats. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the Wayback Machine, Mr. Wizard. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was my first band. I started with that band when I was actually 13, and we signed our first recording contract in 1965 when I was of 15 years old, and golly, uh, my, that's, uh, you know, the funny thing about that is, is that a couple of years ago, I heard there's a new band out in London called the Wombat. Oh, yeah? So I heard it's called the Wombat. <laughs> they probably have no idea it was, it, it was around in the 1960s. What style of music is Wombat? What, what did you play? Uh, what were you... It was, well, you know, we thought we were the Beatles. Uh, we it was all original. We wrote all our own stuff. We did do some, you know, when we were doing concerts. We did a few Beatle tunes, some uh, Everly Brothers, uh -huh. and uh, three really good singers in the band. So we could pull off Beatles, but we wrote uh, a lot of original stuff. And they were primarily back then, you know, '60s love songs. Okay, this was before yeah, you got was. saved. It was. It, it was. Uh, yeah, I grew up uh, under the shadow of my older brother, who was a rock and roller in the 50s. At 16 years old, he released his first record, which was Gold. And his group is called the Rockin' R's, and they are in the Rockabilly Hall of Fame. And they, you know, they did American Bandstand and this and that and all kinds of stuff. So all I can say is that he told me stay out of clubs, and so we did. And we just wrote original music, and then I went from the Wombats to... Uh, a group called Gideon's Bible, which was a non-Christian band as well. But we were kind of like uh, Led Zeppelin meets Pink Floyd. And then uh, in 1970, that group, we had just reformed a new keyboard player and a new bass player and the whole group, I don't know how to say it, but we all gave our heart to the Lord Jesus Christ the same night. And we became probably the first Christian rock band in the U.S. in 1970. So... How does, how does that come about that the entire band gets saved all in one night? What, well, what does that look uh, like? Know, what, it, the weird thing about it is, is that we, uh, you know, we, uh, we were a bunch of hippies, and, and we were looking for truth, and we were studying Eastern philosophy under Paramahansa Yogananda, and we were vegetarians. And, you know, here's the thing about it is, I don't care where you are. I believe that if you're looking for truth, truth will find you. Now, what I found out was is that truth, is a person, and his name is Jesus. Amen. And um, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So a man walked into this uh, living room where we had had a dinner party, and the whole band was there, and our friends, and uh, some roadies, and this man walked in and hung up his coat and just shouted, praise the Lord, and stopped the room, and then he began to tell us about ourselves. Now, this is and uh, what I know as a word of knowledge, and Jesus, you know, used that at the woman at the well. And, mm -hmm. you know, this, he said, well, I know who you are. She, you know, you're, you've been married five times, and the man you're now living with is not your husband, but come and drink of the living water, see? And and this man began to tell us, and there was no condemnation, and then he just he just told us, he said, you've been looking for the way, and we said, yeah, said, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father except by him. Well, the Holy Spirit fell on that place like a ton of bricks, and there went, you know, there went the guru, he's gone. <laughs> when truth finds you, he will change your life, and he did, and so I'm getting up from the floor after about a three-hour carpet washing, and I'm my eyes are puffy from crying, and I got snot coming out of my nose, and, and I'm thinking, you know, this is great, and he holds out his hand and says, I'm your brother in Christ now, and I said, yeah, yeah, we play rock and roll, and he said, play Jesus Rock, 
And I, I said, I didn't know what that was. And he said, I don't know either. That's what the Lord said. Play Jesus Rock. And we did. We, we did. We just, we immediately disbanded all of everything we'd been and we grabbed every song that we knew at the time, like Presence of the Lord by Blind Faith, Eric Clapton, songs that were out there that were about the Lord. So we grabbed those and then we just began to write all new stuff. You know, we all lived together. We still lived together. We had a seven-bedroom house, and we had all things in common, and we became a New Testament church. So, obviously, Gideon's Bible didn't continue forever. At what point did you guys decide, this this has run its course, we're going to move on and do other things? Well, the Gideon's Bible, a bass player was... Like six weeks before he was 25, he got drafted. Keyboard player decided that he didn't want to move from Bloomington, Illinois, to Indianapolis, where our manager lived, and the rest of us did. So we just made the move. Keyboard player came in from off the road that had been with my brother's band, actually, and uh, and an old and the bass player from the Wombats, Tom Byler, came up from Florida, and we just just got together. I mean, we were just reforming the band and. We thought, well, what we call this band, and we didn't know, and, and we felt like the Lord spoke to us and said the group should be called E. And uh, so we, we called it E, and that group was together for about two years and, and disbanded for, uh, that's a long story, but I was fulfilling a, an engagement at the Adam's Apple in Fort Wayne, Indiana with a coffee house. It was a big coffee house, 300 and, um, and I was fulfilling an engagement. The E-band was supposed to be there, and, and John Love said, well, you know, I, you're coming if you have to bring acoustic guitar. And I said, sure, I'll come. And, and then he said, hey, I got these guys that are going to open for you. They go to the Bible school up here at the church, and uh, this is the first, first concert. And I said, what? He said, yeah, there's a band that are open for you. I said, well, what, what are they called? He said, I don't know. They think maybe they would call themselves Petra. Well, that explains so, the next question, which was, how did you meet Bob Hartman? <laughs> Well, Bob, Bob and Greg came up to me at the end of that night, and they said, we really believe the Lord told us you're supposed to be our lead singer. And I said, let me pray about it, and it wasn't immediate. I started working with them on the second album, but uh, I was a worship leader in, in Springfield, Missouri at a church, and, you know, I, I knew the Lord was going to do something, but, I, you, know, you know, you have to wait on God. And believe it or not, aren't we doing that again today? Aren't we all right at crunch time? Isn't everybody just hanging on to their breakthrough? <laughs> just waiting to see what God will do next. I'm telling you. Yeah. Bob talks to you. Greg talks to you. They do manage to get you to record two songs that I personally feel live in Petra history, which are Come and Join Us and God Gave Rock and Roll to You. But you weren't the lead singer yet. When did that well, come up? Or were you? Uh, the next concert. The uh, I actually did... I think I did all the backups on like six songs. I did uh, all the backup vocals on that album as well. Except I think Steve Kent did about four of the songs. Okay. But uh, they, you know, it was like they said, you know, we got we got these songs, and they basically were saying at that point, we want you to be the lead singer. And I was saying, well, you know, guys, I I don't know, and and so then they just called me the next concert. They said, you know, we're doing this date in Chicago, and they flew me up, and we did it cold, and. Uh, then there was two dates here, and there was two dates there. Back back in the in the seventies, there wasn't any concert circuits, anything like that. It was a sparse date here, a sparse date there. Everybody worked. What did you do for a living? Well, I was uh, I was uh, worship, and I worked with the pastor. I actually managed one of his offices. He was a he was a writer, mm -hmm. and uh, and so anyway, I worked with him for really about eight years. But in between that, and then here's the fun thing, you know, Petra was kind of solvent and not solvent and we went through drummers and went through changes and I was in the band out of the band in the band out of the band but yeah I worked on all the projects when they went to the studio they called me and say you you know you got to come help us here so I worked on the next album Watch is Wider Than and then when coming when uh, Never Say Die was coming about I had been traveling to Nashville from Missouri to work with Bob helping him just write he was he would get some songs together they had a four track Mm -hmm. uh, reel to reel and he would put together some stuff and I would fly in and I would do the vocal and he got a couple of really good songs together one was called Never Say Die and I forget what the other one was and, and I took an old E-band song which was from 1971 it was called The Coloring Song mm -hmm. and I put it on the tape and I sent it to Star Song along with a couple other tunes and they immediately responded and we immediately went in the studio and within six weeks, we had a record out. It was pressed out. 
coloring song was on the charts, went to number one, all the way across the top. And Southern Gospel, even, number one, six weeks. And Petra became a 10-year overnight success. So, yeah, that's because a lot of people, that was probably their first exposure to Petra, but you guys had been cranking at it for quite a long time before that. Ten years. Yeah, ten years. 